guys, welcome to my brand new Audi RS7 review. Steph and I have spent the last three days and 1,000 miles exactly in this car. We've been through sunshine, torrential rain, and three foot snow. <laughs> We really have thrown everything at this car and it survived. Oh, has it survived? It's just been fantastic. And now we find ourselves on the Red Rock Road down in the south of France, which is one of my favorite roads on the planet. shout out and thanks to BOTB the dream car competition company who have sponsored this trip for both Steph and I I can't thank you guys enough you can actually win one of these RS7s over on their site at the moment the link will be below in the description tickets start from just 85 pence they've got 150 cars to choose from and they give away a car every single week you just need to be 16 years and over tickets for the RS7 are £4.65 and you can be in with the chance of winning £20,000 worth of cash as well. You probably need most of that for the fuel bills. <laughs> At time of launch in the UK there's going to be three trim levels. The base RS7, which is about 97 grand on the road, comes with 21 inch wheels, LED headlamps, and a load of other standard equipment. I urge you to head over to the Audi configurator to check what that is. Then you've got the carbon black edition, which is 105,000 pounds on the road. And that comes with 22 inch wheels and a load of black styling, as you can imagine. If you're after one that looks good, you have to go up for the carbon black. And then you've got the range topper, the Vorsprung, which is 113 and a half thousand pounds on the road. So that's gonna come fully loaded pretty much. Uh, it's gonna have the RS Suspension Plus, which this car doesn't have. It's gonna have things like the top speed limiter lifted to 174 miles an hour. It's gonna have the pan roof. Pretty much everything that is optional on this car will come on that flagship Vorsprung model. Audi UK also did a launch edition car, although they only brought 41 of them into the UK and apparently they were all sold already. This particular car is your typical early press car and its spec doesn't really reflect to any of the available models. It's a bit of a mixture. Most important headline figure is it retails at 110 and a half thousand pounds. <laughs> oh, it's a lot of money, but wow, it's a lot of car. Spec for spec, they work out about three and a half to four thousand pounds more expensive than the RS6. Sorry if I just stop talking for a second and take in some of this view. Oh wow. Probably a good time to point out that I'm on winter tires just like I was in the RS6, which absolutely saved our ass a couple of days ago in that snow. Now it's 10 degrees outside and obviously the car is gonna struggle a little bit on these winters compared to if it was wearing summers, but it still handles exceptionally well. We'll talk about that a bit more later. Oh, look at this. Let's open the roof. Let's just enjoy this a little bit. a 
piece of road. Oh. Long tunnel coming up. Oh, this road is just awesome. I've almost picked a road that's too good that doesn't allow me to talk enough on camera because you need to really focus down here. It's more of a box to spider type of road than an RS7 road but saying that it just deals with everything so well and part of the reason it does that is because it has rear wheel steer and in these slower turns you really feel the car rotating so well and in fact when you jump in this car for the first time in a while and you're not sort of tuned into the all wheel steer you kind of oversteer sometimes into corners as in steer too far into the corner because it's just so efficient at getting around tighter bends. It's unbelievable. So under the bonnet, we have the familiar four liter V8 twin turbo producing just under 600 brake horsepower. 750 Newton meters of torque, which is the important figure on such a heavy car and that's mated to the brilliant ZF eight-speed gearbox. And I've got some lovely paddles in the steering wheel. I really do like the steering wheel. And that engine does make light work of this car. It's only meant to be, I think about 20 kilos lighter than the RS6, which is effectively the same car. But it definitely feels noticeably quicker in a straight line. The 0-62 figure is 3.6 seconds, so it's a tenth quicker quoted than the RS6, but it definitely feels a couple more tenths quicker than that. Maybe I'm imagining it, but it's really hard to tell. And in fact, on this trip, because I've been a passenger to Steph for a lot of the journey, as a passenger, it feels ballistically quick. <laughs> As a driver, you kind of get used to it and you've got the wheel to hold on to and obviously you can anticipate everything that's happening because you're in control. <laughs> it's just the road, the car. <laughs> Top speed, well, I believe this car has got the limiter lifted to 174 miles an hour and i'm in no doubt it was smashed through that limiter and in fact if that limiter was taken off i'm in no doubt this is a 210 mile an hour car because it's so so slippery and actually that's one of my real plus points for this car on long journeys it is so comfortable the air suspension is amazing when you're out of the rs modes the seats are really comfortable not the most supportive as i talked about in my rs6 video but it's the shape of the car it's so aerodynamic and so slippery and it just is incredible on long journeys it makes no wind noise <laughs> got to be a bit careful through these tunnels because you've got climbers and cyclists and all sorts around here and also as we discovered this morning it was minus three last night, so you do get big patches of ice. So what's it been like to live with for the past four days and a thousand miles? It's been really good. It's been really comfortable. It's been fun when we've got to roads like this. It's been amazing and pliant and relaxing on long motorway cruises. It really has done everything, a bit like the RS6 does, you know, it's just dealt with everything. And I keep having to remind myself that I'm on winter tires through here. I would absolutely love to see what this car feels like on a good set of summers. Oh. The cabin is a lovely place to be. I'm not the biggest fan of Audi in their 
obsessive touchscreen technology at the moment and in fact the brand new A3 was launched a couple of days ago and I've seen in that one they've they've done a really nice sort of combination of touchscreen at the top and buttons and a couple of dials where you need buttons so I hope that's going to be the future for the next generation of, of A6s and A7s because I just don't get on with the climate control touchscreen I just think it's a little bit gimmicky space well there's plenty of room in here uh, the front's lovely uh, the back bit of the cabin's really spacious and in fact I sat back there for about 20 miles of the journey while Steph was driving and it's very very comfortable back there but it is certainly more claustrophobic because of the sloping roof line and there's less headroom back there and in fact there's a bit less foot room actual foot room not leg room definitely the RS6 is the more practical option if you want you know rear legroom, rear, headroom, etc. And if you want it to be a bit less claustrophobic in there, because although we've got the lovely sunroof here, it's not a twin roof like it is in the RS6. And that opens up the back a lot and sends a lot of light to the rear passengers. The virtual cockpit's fantastic. This has got the RS views on it, just like the RS6. You've got the RS buttons, so you've got RS1 and RS2, which are basically presets. But unfortunately it doesn't have a head-up display and again I think on a car that's £110,000 it should come with a head-up display and I'm a bit disappointed about that because I'm a big head-up display fan so make sure you tick that box on your RS6 because when I'm really pushing on down here I don't want to be looking down I want to be looking through the windscreen. come to some kind of conclusion if we're comparing it to the RS6 to me it does feel a little bit faster and a little bit sharper I don't know if that's because it's a fraction lighter or if the center of gravity is a bit lower but it definitely feels a bit more agile through some of these twisty turns I'm blown away by its breadth of ability it really will do everything as we've experienced over the last few days it's Quattro all-wheel drive system is amazing. In the snow, we found out that it's very rear-wheel biased and it will rotate on itself, it feels great. And it's got us out of so much trouble. We drove past so many stranded locals. This thing was just like a snow plow, quite literally. Had no issues. Obviously, the winter tires help massively, but it really is a car that you can take anywhere. And with the air suspension, you can lift it up so you've got extra ground clearance. That side of this car really blew my mind. Personally, if it was my money, it would go on the RS6 because I prefer the way it looks. I love the benefits of the practicalities with an RS6. You can throw bikes in the boot, etc. And it's a little bit cheaper, so it's a kind of no-brainer to me, but I do see why Audi produced this brilliant RS7 because it is a complete alternative to the RS6 and not everyone likes estates or a van, so it does make a lot of sense to them. Guys, thanks so much for watching another video of mine. The support this year has just been incredible and I really, really appreciate it. It allows me to go on trips like this and cars like this with good friends like Steph. So make sure you head over and check out Steph's channel and his videos from this trip because they will be incredible, I'm sure. One more massive shout out to BOTB as well because without those guys, we wouldn't be on this trip. So huge thanks and please, Check out the link below. It will be in a pinned comment and in the description. Head over and see if you can win yourself a car or an RS7. Can you class this as a car? It's more of a rocket ship. Till the next time, guys. I will see you.
then. 